I'm not talking about like heart health. I'm not talking about like liver health. I'm not talking about child health. I'm talking about getting weight off, okay? Like just shut up. So anyway. Um, I like to eat things that are as, don't start with me, low calorie as possible. Just listen to me. You have not had a Diet Coke until you've had it the, same, the way I've told you to make it, okay? America is fat, okay? No. Don't cheat yourself. Don't lie to yourself. You're only lying to yourself, okay? You're only lying to yourself. You're not eating anymore. Shove your mouth full of lettuce if you have to. Like, no, you shouldn't eat anything. If you don't get it, then there's, there's nothing to teach you. You're not gonna die, you fing cow. You're not gonna like, wake up in the morning emaciated. Skinny legend supermodel vibes, okay? you, okay? Hey guys, today we'll be discussing Alex, aka HRH Collections, tips on how to be a skinny legend. In particular, we'll be seeing if Alex and science agree on how to lose weight. So first, a little backstory on Alex in case you don't know who she is. She is a longtime YouTuber and jewelry designer known for her extreme honesty. Oh my God. Oh my God, it tastes like, it literally tastes like a public school. Her sudden angry rants. You're so embarrassing, man. Like, like you make me want to fucking like throw up. You're so cringy. Like. And most recently, her weight loss. Seriously, I like woke up this morning and I was just like skinny. I was like, wow, who the f are you? Okay. So Alex lost the weight through calorie counting. I calorie count, and if you give a f the f off my channel, okay? It's all about calories, okay? It's all about calories. I don't wanna hear anyone has to say, like, I don't care. And it would be an understatement to say that she is a big believer in this method. And I will always say it's all about calories, so f off, okay? Because it's true. Dr. Now also says 1,200 calories, high protein, low carb, okay? So go talk to him if you don't think it's true because it's true, bitch. That's it. Science is 100% in agreement with Alex on this one. Weight loss truly is calories in versus calories out. Hey guys, I was editing this and I thought, wow, that was really bad phrasing. So what I should have said was, it is well established that when you take in more energy than you burn, you gain weight. And when you take in less energy than you burn, you lose weight. This is a fundamental concept in body weight regulation and quote, about as close to a scientific fact as we can get. However, if we shift the focus from the mechanics of losing weight to actually sustaining that weight loss over time, we do need to consider calorie quality. And this is where the evidence and Alex disagree. All about low calories. I told you I can eat 12 Oreos. I can eat a thousand calories of Oreos or a thousand calories of broccoli. And I would, it would be the same thing. Go ask Dr. Now, like don't talk to me about it. Go talk, go talk to Dr. Now about it. Leave me the so this isn't wrong, but it isn't right either when we are considering the whole picture, when we're considering the success of the diet overall and long term. First off, obviously, this is a thousand calories of broccoli and this is a thousand calories of Oreos. Obviously, it's gonna be a lot harder to eat six bags of broccoli than it is going to be to eat less than a full pack of Oreos. But also, the way that these foods can impact our appetite is almost the complete opposite. Broccoli is voluminous while being low calorie and packed with fiber and protein. Eating a lot of broccoli would keep you full not only from the sheer volume of food in your stomach, indicating to your stomach stretch receptors that you are indeed full, but also due to its slow digestion rate and the favorable effects to your hunger hormones owing to the protein and fiber. Eating Oreos, on the other hand, could actually increase your appetite. And this is really individual and dependent on things like how balanced your hormones and blood sugar are to begin with and how excited your brain gets when you're eating Oreos. But usually, if you have a lot of weight to lose, this is something to pay attention to. This fucking dumb post, Facey after eight. First of all, it should say nothing. That's not right. Like seriously, I'm gonna start posting these. Things after eight, things that you after eight, nothing. Stupid. Apple and peanut butter. Oh my god. This is trying to f you up. This is trying to f you, okay? Greek yogurt. Chicken. Oh yeah. You're gonna start eating protein at 8 o'clock? Are you retarded? String cheese. Nuts. Turkey jerky. Oh yeah, that's great. Fucking sodium. You're gonna blow up with a blimp in the morning. Baked or grilled meat. Salmon. 
vegetables. Vegetables, fine. I, I, I approve that, okay? Some person who's like struggling doesn't really know. It's gonna fucking follow his advice. And no, you shouldn't be eating anything after eight. If you have to eat after eight, you should eat something green. Like, like just shove your mouth full of lettuce if you have to. Like, no, you shouldn't eat anything. Definitely not fruit. It's all sugar. Okay. So this is really like your classic weight loss myth. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest that we store more fat at night or anything like that. There doesn't seem to be any difference in night calories versus day calories. Whether you're eating chicken or yogurt or vegetables or whatever it is that you're eating. However, there is evidence to suggest that those who eat closer to their bedtime consume more calories overall during the day. And there have also been studies that have shown that usually at night, people are not exactly making the healthiest choices. So if these two things combined result in you consuming more calories than you've burned that day, then this can of course result in weight gain. Actually, even if we were talking about intermittent fasting here, intermittent fasting has not been shown to result in weight loss in of itself. Meaning that if you were to lose weight on an intermittent fasting diet, it would be because you were reducing your calories inadvertently and not because there is some special metabolic process that stops you, that, that results in weight loss. <laughs> I don't really fuck that up. You know what, I'm not gonna refilm it, whatever. Now that being said, I do really believe in intermittent fasting as a health strategy. I think the research is super compelling. Um, it makes sense when you consider our circadian rhythms and all that kind of stuff. So it's something to look up if you're curious about it for sure. But as a weight loss strategy, it might just be needlessly difficult or um, unnecessary if your sole purpose of doing it is just to lose weight, um, yeah. And no, you should never eat when you're hungry, okay? If you're hungry, you should eat. No, you shouldn't, okay? No, you shouldn't. That is like, every time I think about fucking, fucking bitches who are saying, you should eat when you're hungry. Don't listen to her. You should eat when you're hungry. Eat when you're hungry. That is the worst advice ever, okay? If I've talked about this a bit before on my channel, but letting yourself get to the point where you are very hungry or regularly ignoring real feelings of hunger can result in loss of control in the face of food or even binge eating if you're doing it chronically. Now, obviously being a previous binge eater myself, I am very biased toward this point of view, um, but it is consistent with what the research indicates. One of the most important things I learned is that you don't wanna be coming against, fighting against your biology when you're trying to lose weight. Going too long between meals and letting yourself really get to that ravenous point can result in very high levels of the hunger hormone ghrelin. Excessive ghrelin levels are often correlated with overeating when you do actually sit down to a meal. One of the reasons that they think that this happens is because ghrelin seems to have a big impact on the reward circuits in our brains. It increases our focus and attraction to food, particularly palatable, tastier foods that are higher in calories, while at the same time reducing our impulse control and ability to make rational decisions. But there is a distinction between hunger and appetite, and I actually think that this is what Alex is referring to. No, if you're fucking hungry, maybe you should ask yourself, because guess what? I'm hungry all the time in my head, all the time. I could eat, when I, I could always eat something. That's just how I am, like I could always eat. But no, you shouldn't eat. If you're hungry, ask yourself, are you really hungry? Don't just eat because you're hungry. That's the dumbest thing in the world. That's how people get fat. That's why America is so fat. The fucking nerve of these bitches out there. Like, if I ate when I was hungry, I would literally be fatter than I was last year. Like, I, I, I'm always hungry. I don't know what hungry means. Like, I legit, well now I do, but like, I don't know what hungry means. Like, I don't, my body doesn't get it. I'm, I can be hungry all the time. So just shut up, everyone's different. Hunger is the physical need for food, while appetite is the desire for food. And honestly, I think that this is a bigger issue than a lot of people realize. So many of us can't discern our real hunger from our appetite anymore, and we just eat whenever we are prompted to eat. The problem with this is the appetite isn't really um, an infallible thing. It's it's really dependent on food cues. It's really dependent on the environment you're in. It's really dependent on, it's dependent on a lot of different things. So if we're just to fold every time we get a craving, then, you know, we're gonna end up obese pretty quickly. I know personally, my obesity was not caused by excessive hunger, but rather always being in the mood to eat. <laughs> 
I think the best solution to this is to ensure that the diet or eating plan you're on is providing you with enough calories. You can get a rough idea of this by calculating your total daily energy expenditure or your BMR, um, and then making sure that you don't go below whatever number it spits out for you. And second is to make up your diet of as many real foods as you can. That way your body gets a chance to feel genuinely satiated and you can kind of begin to reconnect with your real hunger cues. If your hunger or your appetite is all over the place because of the food that you're eating, it can be difficult to know the difference between hunger and a craving or hunger and low blood sugar. I know like intuitive eating likes to tell you to honor your hunger and that can often extend to cravings. And though I obviously believe in eating enough food for your body and getting enough nutrients and all that kind of stuff, that's important, but a craving is not necessarily a reflection of your body's need for food. In my opinion and my experience coming from being obese, giving into every craving is just as unhealthy as starving yourself, particularly if you're at risk of becoming massively overweight like I was. If you fuck up and you don't wanna like up your like progress then you should do something to rectify that situation like just because you like, feel sorry for yourself doesn't mean that it's gonna like go away like you did damage so make sure you fucking do something to like get that to like rectify that damage someone is it do cardio as a punishment to make up for it what's wrong with that absolutely if you hit over if you go over your calories one day go on a run what's wrong with that Ugh. the next thing was you shouldn't restrict calories or meals. Oh, really? You shouldn't, you shouldn't like maybe cut back on your calories to make up for what you did the, the, last, the day before? You 100% should. You 100% should. This infuriates me. On one hand, I do think that planning around higher calorie meals is a good thing. If you know in advance you're going out for dinner and what like the caloric load looks like of what you're gonna be eating, then you have an idea of what to eat for lunch so that you can still stay within the range of your calorie goals. I think that this is a skill and I think that this is part of living a balanced lifestyle. However, and I'm obviously biased here based on my experience with binge eating, and actually this is the only part of the video that's not based on science. It's just based on my opinion and experience. But for years I was trapped in this exact cycle of binge eating the one day or making a mistake the one day and then needing to correct it. So I was like eternally in this debt of making mistakes. I'd always promised myself that I was gonna rectify the damage the next day by working out more or eating less, usually in the form of eating nothing at all. And I would manage to do that for most of the day until I would inevitably crack at the end of the day and you know, add even more to my debt. So I was kind of always restarting and promising that tomorrow was gonna to be the day. And I think in doing that, we're making the mistake of assuming that our future self is going to be more powerful than our present self. And I think for a lot of people, this has the effect of kind of soothing your anxiety in the moment. It may allow you to eat more than you would if you didn't count tomorrow as a new day. And I think that this is generally effective being that for a lot of people, tomorrow never comes. We're still the same person. We're still confronted with the same struggles that we were today. Um, and I just think that that's generally an ineffective method. And for many people, if you're anything like me, you can end up in this locked in this binge and restrict wheel fueled by self-loathing where you're kind of just stuck making mistakes and trying to make up for it rather than just going forward. Instead of doing this, I do think that the best solution is to accept it and move on. But to use this as a learning experience by collecting information afterwards, why did this happen? What were the preceding incidents? Um, was there a specific food involved? Getting information about what actually happened here, um, what did you say to yourself? That is really, really key. I think if you collect information every time you make a mistake, you are that much closer to correcting that problem. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep in mind, everything I discussed today is not necessarily um, an accurate reflection of what Alex thinks. I literally took sentences that she said totally out of context so that I can make a video about those specific principles. It doesn't mean that she disagrees or agrees with anything that I'm saying. It literally just means that I use snippets of her saying stuff to make my video more interesting. So I hope that's clear, but in case it's not, here it is. I just thought it'd be a lot more entertaining way to talk about common weight loss ideas than me sitting here in front of the camera just being like, yes, you know, not as fun. And that is all. So thank you guys so much for watching. 
Um, and I will see you in the next one.